Hello, my brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we as we have been doing for over a year and a half, spending meaningful moments with the master, taking the word from the way back then, the word of God, and applying it to the right now, building a bridge between the world of the Bible and our world. And I want to thank you for being with me on this journey. This week's on the heels of the 4th of July, we're talking about a justice chapter in the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 15. And on a previous uh, powerful point to ponder, I, I talked to you about different translations of the scripture. And I like to highly recommend that not only do you have read the King James, but read the message translation and especially the New Living Translation. These are translations that, that better explain and use modern day, day terms and, and words to help us understand what the word is actually talking about. Now, in this series that we're on, we're looking at something Jesus said in response to a criticism that Judas made. There was Mary who had poured perfume on Jesus's head, precious ointment, and Judas said we should have sold it and taken the proceeds and used it to bless the poor. And Jesus in response says, the poor you, you will have with you always, you will always have the poor among you. Now, Jesus was not prescribing what God's intent is. Whenever you read a passage in the Bible, remember that everything that is descriptive is not prescriptive. For example, the Bible says that Judas hung himself. Well, that's descriptive, but it's not prescriptive. And when Jesus says the poor you will have with you always, Jesus was making an assessment about how we have arranged society in an unjust, unfair way that helps to perpetuate poverty, that puts certain groups in the classification of poverty. He's quoting when he says, you will have the poor among you always, he's quoting from the book of Deuteronomy, which is, I believe, the greatest justice chapter in the Bible. Now, when we say justice, let me tell you what justice is. Justice is simply the act of righting wrongs. There are many wrongs in our society, especially as it relates to economic justice and fairness and people having access to the basic necessities of life needed to live. Access to healthcare, access to good schools, access to, um, to food, to food, or access uh, to college, access. Some people have access, some people don't have access. And what determines accessibility is race, skin color, skin color. And justice for all means, should mean that, that all people should have access. And that's what God wills. It's called democracy. And Deuteronomy chapter 15 specifies that God is against justice. Let's very quickly look at what it says. Deuteronomy chapter 15. Since Jesus quoted from there, let's read it. Gen Gen uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15, and we'll just go over very quickly. Verses four and five says that God wants us to eliminate property. Look at what it says. There should be no poor among you. Eliminate. So put that down and you're, and you're, if you're following me. Uh, the first point is eliminate poverty. And then let's look at verses one and three. Verses one and three, write it down. It says, at the end of every seventh year, you must cancel. Watch this. Cancel the debt. Okay, you're talking about canceling student loan debt. Cancel the debts of everyone who owes you. Would, would, would you come out of poverty if you could cancel all your debt? Yes, you would. Verse 2 says this. This is how it must be done. Everyone must cancel the loans, or student loans, that they have made to their fellow Israelites. They must not demand payments from their neighbors our relatives for the Lord's time of release. Stop here. Of release. That word release is the Jubilee year. Jubilee year is every seven years. All debt is canceled. That When you cancel all debt, that means there's no permanent underclass. So first of all, he says, I don't want any poor among you. Eliminate poverty and then put it down. Number two, eradicate debt. Eradicate debt. Eliminate poverty. Eradicate debt. If you're taking notes, put verses one, two, and three next to eradicate debt. Put verses four and five next to eliminate 
poverty. And you read this in your leisure, get you a modern translation and see if this is not what the word is actually saying. Number three, just go ahead and put that down. And that is elevate generosity. Elevate generosity. Let's look at verses seven and eight. Taking notes, put verses seven and eight next to elevate generosity. We're in the 15th chapter. Know what it says. But if there are any poor Israelites in your town, when you arrive in the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard hearted or tight fisted towards. He's talking about being generous. Just, is our public policy a generous public policy? Elevate public policy. Look at number four. First, eliminate poverty, eradicate debt, elevate generosity. Number four, put it down, exterminate loopholes. Exterminate loopholes. Look, if you will, if you're taking notes at verses nine and 10. Verse nine says this. Do not be mean-spirited, refuses someone alone because the year of counseling debt is close at hand. If you refuse to make a loan and the needy person cries out to the Lord, you will be, in other words, let's say every seven years you're supposed to, you're supposed to be, all debts are canceled. So suppose somebody uh, makes a loan or asks for a loan and it's the sixth year, the 11th month. Well, that means then if you give me a loan, then in two months, it's going to be canceled. So there's what, G, what he is saying is don't look for loopholes. And there's all types of tax loopholes that some people get. And that's why the rich don't have to pay taxes because of the ta of the loopholes. And he's saying here, exterminate all loopholes. Look at what he says in number five. OK, and that is evaluate poverty. In other words, don't say that people are poor because of fate. Don't say people are poor uh, because of their own failure or don't say they're poor because it's their own fault. Look at poverty and see that it's an issue of fairness. And that's what verse 11 says. Verse 11 says this, there will always be some in the land who are poor. That is why I'm commanding you to share freely with the poor and with other Israelites in need. No, notice he doesn't say you. He doesn't say you're poor because you sell drugs. No, you, you, you're not. You, you, selling drugs is not what made you poor. You're selling drugs because you are poor because you don't have job opportunities and equal opportunities in your community. Never say what you won't do. It, 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 notice that here God is attributing poverty to the lack of compassion and equity and fairness. He says, there will always be some in the land who are poor because we won't freely share, share freely with the poor. So the roots of poverty is greed. Greed. Well, if you evaluate poverty, then he says, eviscerate hoarding. Eviscerate hoarding in hoarding. Look at verse 11 again. The second part of the lesson is this is the hoarding. So people are poor. Now it says eviscerate, eviscerate hoarding. There will, uh, he says, that is why I'm commanding you to share freely with the poor and other Israelites in need. Let's go on. He says, emancipate slaves. Emancipate slaves. Look at verse 12. Notice what it says. If a fellow Israel sells herself or himself or herself to be your servant of slaves for you six years, in the seventh year, you must set that servant free. Remember I told you every seven years, it's the year of Jubilee where slaves get set free and all debt gets canceled. My God. In fact, when Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me in Luke chapter four and verse 18, he is quoting the Jubilee. He's saying, I am introducing a Jubilee. Emancipate the slaves. A, estimate reparations. Once you emancipate the slaves, then pay reparations. Preach Kevin Wayne Cosby. Look at verses 13 and 14 and see if it doesn't talk about reparations. It says, when you release a male servant, do not send him away empty handed. Give him a generous farewell gift from your flock, from your threshing floor and your wine press. Share with him some of the bounty with which the Lord your God has blessed you with. In other words, once they get free, give them reparations. And that's the reason black people are poor, because we have never received reparations. We, we work, but we didn't get a paycheck. We've never gotten reparations. He said, repair them once, estimate what the reparations should be. Number nine, educate society. 
let society know the true reasons why there's poverty. Look at verse 15. See if I'm not in the Bible. It says, remember, you were once slaves in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you. That is why I'm giving you this minute. He says, remember. And we have a whole initiative right now called that that called patriotic education that is designed to give people to misremember how we got to where we are. They fight against edu truly giving an accurate accounting of American history. They push against what's called critical race theory because they do not want you to know the truth. But God says, I want you to remember verse 8, 15. See if it's not in the Bible. And then number 10, once you do these nine things, you can escalate the beloved community. Escalate. That's what Dr. King called it, the beloved community. His dream was the beloved community where everyone would have opportunity. Look at verse 6 and verse 10. Verse 6 says, the Lord will bless you as he has promised. You will lend money to many nations. In other words, you're going to, be, you're going to have a prosperous nation. You'll be in a position, the whole nation, to loan money. Verse 10 says this. Verse 10 says, give generously to the poor, not grudgingly for the Lord. Your God will bless you in everything you do. You'll be a part of the beloved community. And this is the whole of 15th chapter of Deuteronomy. And when Jesus was being criticized by Judas, this is the passage that Jesus Quote it to Judas when he said, the poor you will have the always. Those who want to be greedy, and many of these with these, these white conservative evangelicals and some of their black flunkies who think their thoughts after them would use this passage to say that God is not concerned about the poor. God is concerned about the poor. Deuteronomy 15, don't spiritualize it, is about the poor. Jesus borrowed from Deuteronomy 15. Jesus is in alignment with Deuteronomy 15. The problem is the church isn't. And we need to get in alignment with Deuteronomy chapter 15 so that we can have true justice, not only in these United States of America, but throughout the world. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the justice mandate we find in Deuteronomy 15. Help us to follow it and advance it, both in our personal and public policy. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me again for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, you need a church home. You need a church home. Walk in obedience, get connected to a, a church, not only because of what the church can do for you, but what you can do for the church, how you can make a difference in somebody else's life. So if you don't have one, we would love to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us, newstart at ssclive.org. Well, thank you for being with me. We'll pick up on this. We'll close it out tomorrow. But until then, you enjoy your day today, but remember to stay safe, stay sane, and remember, during COVID-19, God is still in control. Love you much. See you tomorrow.